Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and welcome to the reading where we're going to take a look at what's coming towards you in January. So this is the energy that's going to be coming your way um, and it's going to be relevant to the soulmate journey, the soulmate situation that you guys have going on. So it will be a general reading for this collective as always, won't resonate with everyone, shouldn't resonate with everyone. But if it does resonate with you, then maybe take a look at some of the other readings. Maybe um, maybe think about subscribing because all of these readings are very much connected to one another. Um, I think we'll use this as the primary deck for today. And we're going to start out with just kind of the energetic and emotional backdrop for the month of January from a soulmate perspective. Just kind of that energetic and emotional backdrop. Looking at kind of the whole month, which... Like yesterday's readings, um, it's very broad. You know, when you're looking at the more you broaden out that amount of time, the more the messages become broad. So it's something that you have to keep in mind. But at this point, we're just kind of looking at the month of January. January is go time. It's got a sense of being go time to it. Um, some things maybe that have been percolating or that you've been waiting for. We know that there's a lot of that sense of... Um, there's a lot of that sense of having hit a point that you turn, you you finish out a cycle and you start a new one, but you kind of get flung energetically into this new one. With the Queen of Swords, there's a little out with the old, in with the new kind of energy. And the Queen with the Swords, uh, Queen of Swords really kind of talks about the out with the old piece. So this is where that energy of kind of uh, almost spring plink, spring cleaning comes in, um, cleaning up things that no longer make sense. Make sure, though, that there's not too much um, of a need to control the environment in order to do that. It's possible to get a little too carried away in that energy, and so this King of Wands suggests that that may be part of it. Um, you may see that manifest in your person if you're, so yesterday we did a, an in contact version of a reading as well as a not in contact slash no contact version of the reading. Um, and I thought that was kind of an interesting way to look at it because a lot of the times when, um, when our readings start to, to look at things two different ways, it's often if you're in contact versus if you're not in contact. Um, with this King of Wands, one of the things that I notice is that if you're in contact, you may notice um, there's an attempt to steer the conversation or to steer the situation. Maybe not just the conversation but kind of the situation overall. And it looks like for um, for some of you, if not all, depending on how much you broaden your scope of the statement, you have some important conversations coming up, many of them with this person. Um, with the Spirit of Wands, so this is a sense of, it feels like a little bit more of that go time kind of energy that comes from the chariot, but this is very passionate energy. It's energy that you can't fake. I'll say that. It's the kind that like when you go into a workout and you discover it's a really great workout day and you just feel like you're made of power and ready to go, you can't fake that. Like that's something that you, on a day that you don't have it, like you can push through, but it just doesn't feel the same. Um, Nine of Swords, there is, despite the fact that there's a need to move through, um, this Nine of Swords talks about a sense of anxiety. And when I see that, I'm especially reminded of this Queen of Swords and this King of Wands, kind of where the energy comes together, where there's a desire to um, exert control over a situation. And then with the Queen of Swords, it's a very tending toward cutting things out sort of energy with the out with the old. It's possible to overdo that. The Nine of Swords is the sort of energy, that anxiety energy that might make something like that happen. Um, just something to watch out for or to watch for. If you're in um, interaction with this person, you may see this behavior in them and you may recognize that energy as um, being within yourself as well. And so here's where it really comes out. Here with the judgment card in the reverse is where that really comes, comes across where if you 
are paying attention, you'll see this in yourself and you get to decide what you think of it and how you want to handle it. So there's a lot of an ability to manage the situation without actually ever ending up in control of it. You can influence it based on your own behaviors in a lot of cases, and that's what you both really start to understand. You know, it's um, it's a little bit like dangerous information because you start to realize how much influence you really have over something. But what you'll discuss it, it what you discover is that you don't have um, as many choices about the way things actually play out. Like you could, you have control in that you can make something happen that would really change things, change the way that your lives work. But it is not necessarily, um, you don't necessarily have all the flexibility to do the things that you want and still be able to drive the outcomes that you're seeking. Um, that's where it starts to get really challenging and the choices start to feel less. Um, it's not so much that these things can't be done. It's just, it's a lot of times it's looking at at what cost. And with the Spirit of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups, okay, so this energy along with the moon, I feel like all really kind of makes it work. Um, this is this is a particularly difficult energy to be in. Um, okay, so we've got... The Spirit of Pentacles in the reverse, feeling like there's a lack of deserving. A Seven of Cups, not sure which direction to go in um, all of the directions that have been given. And yet you feel like it's go time. A lot of a desire to control the situation and some of that does not necessarily work out um, the way that you would hope. It doesn't drive the outcomes that you're looking for. And what you discover is that's really a challenging sort of thing to do. Um, but you don't have as much information as maybe you'd like to have. And this goes for both of you. That's what that moon card is all about. It's mystery. And it, what it necessitates is finding a path and going down it despite not being able to see all the details. So making decisions with less information. Also with the hanged man, there's something that you're still working on learning. And this is both of you um, are still working on learning that that would make all of this make a lot more sense. Basically, you won't go down these same paths more than once because you're going to have some realizations in this experience that help to um, enlighten you for future experiences. So um, but you kind of, you, it's like you, you can't be told you have to live through it. Um, the universe card says that you're going to benefit from having, um, you're going to benefit from having wrapped up a cycle. And this is one of the cycles maybe that you're wrapping up right about now, because this feels fairly immediate, but it also feels like the wrapping up of the cycle is not necessarily a one and done sort of proposition. It's something that happens over a period of time. Maybe you institute that here um, toward the end of the year and it happens, it resolves itself somewhere in the January time frame. I feel like something significant happens in that January time frame that um, you've been working toward for a lot longer than you may realize. Um, but with the movement of wands, I feel like you're ready to go in that direction. You're ready to um, bring the appropriate amount of energy to the, the learning curve. Um, maybe I'll just say that. So let's look now at what it looks like um, is really coming your direction, you know, and it's not so much what we think is going to happen it's it's what's the indication or the implication of the energy that is facing your way at this point so i think those are two separate cards you've got that seven of cups coming out again this time coming out in the reverse so we have the seven of cups over here we've got the seven of cups over here we also have the eight of cups with the uh the sense of what, having to leave something behind in order to to seek out something new and more positive. So this feels a little bit like a leap of faith, only it's not quick. It's a gradual sort of walking away of faith. Um, not unlike the way that the speed that which at which it looks like this person in the card is moving, you know. Um, but it's, it's a sense of walking away from something that you understand off to something that looks like a better day. 
but not having a lot of understanding about the options laid out in front of you and having some anxiety around that. Um, with the with the moon card here and the hanged man, it's not just not knowing exactly which way you're heading. It this is really it makes it even more of a leap of faith because there's less information there and there's a perspective that's not been gained, a corner that hasn't yet been turned. So it's no judgment to say that they don't have the perspective or that you don't have the perspective. And I think this is true of both of you. Okay, so you've got the Eight of Pentacles, which is really positive, speaks very highly of kind of the place where you find yourself. But the Nine of Pentacles talks a little bit about the fears. So the Nine of Pentacles, it feels like it doesn't have things together where the Eight of Pentacles actually does deep down and functions like the rock. But is it the rock because it needs to be or is the rock because it really actually has all of its gaps fulfilled? And so the thing is, the answer isn't one or the other and it has changed. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that means. Hopefully that will make more sense to someone else. But there, it, that is kind of the thing that wants to come across there is that you have changed. Both of you have changed and you're going to I think surprise yourselves a little bit this nine of pentacles in the reverse is a perception and it is it turns out potentially an undue perception okay let's see what else comes out here so this doesn't feel like bad energy to me but it does feel like um like somebody who does something that gets interpreted as fear ooh, fearless um let's see here Oh, Spirit of Cups, but in reverse. Okay, so this is um, this is a reality, but also a watch out. This is about um, needing to egoistically look a certain way about things. So having a need to seem emotionally together in a certain way or um, needing to seem emotionally in a certain level of control. That's really about emotional control and public perception of it. Um, okay, but also feeling like they're not exactly ready for what comes next. There's a sense of not feeling ready and not knowing if they're ready. Okay, and that's the end of that. Not knowing if they're ready and so kind of putting off. We had a sideways tower there that honestly could have stayed sideways because it, it had... Um, implications of both the upright and the reverse the way that it felt was you're ready to jump into something new um, but there's a lot of fear around it and so there's also kind of a desire not to as well it was an honorable mention but it kind of felt like something that I might bring in to the reading okay let's see what else wants to come up for this so they're not necessarily feeling like they're ready to move forward with something um, but there's still this present, there's still this, um, it's go time. It feels a little bit like pressure. Um, again, with the sense of them not being the same person, of you not being the same person, uh, it's similar to what I got with the Eight of Pentacles here, where you may not have that perception of yourself, or you may not identify your, as a person who is especially talented in a certain area, but you're going to discover that you have skills you were unaware of in this area. And it's going to be something in um, an emotional, you may be a very emotionally intelligent person, but you may also have some gaps that make you um, feel weaker in certain places. And all of a sudden you find yourself like not being as weak in those places that's kind of what it feels like here um with the devil in the reverse because it's like a perception that used to control you or used to hold sway over you in some way that no longer does um and it you might not realize that you're going to be as ready for this as you are so i feel like that's kind of what's happening with the nine of pentacles in reverse that's what's happening with the earth mother that's sideways there feels like it needs to stay sideways. Um, this isn't bad. None of this feels like it's bad, but it feels like you surprise yourself a little bit um, with the ability to handle 
the results of stepping out into something new. Now, my question is, who's doing the stepping into something new? Because this is in the January time frame, and I'm curious to know who's taking that first step. Because it seems like everything is not only... Okay, so what needs to happen in this energy in order for it to remain the same color and clarity that it is now is no it needs to be that nobody cares how successful this step into the next this next step is like it has to and and that's not going to necessarily be reality so this is where the personal pieces start to come into it but there's a lot of potential in this energy there are also a lot of messages that are kind of flowing about there for somebody i feel the hierophant in this energy i feel like there is a lot of guidance out there to be gathered to each of yourselves. Um, it's just a matter of how you would want to do that or if you want to do that. You're still both looking to seek balance. And just like that tower that was coming out kind of sideways in the honorable mention earlier, um, there's some resistance and some fear that keeps keeps you from moving forward. First off, there's poor communication in almost every one of these situations and yet a desire to move toward a place that's balanced. For a lot of you, you're just looking to um to to understand what's coming next and to be able to think that this is um something that's respectful that's coming next. Your person seems almost prepared to reciprocate that but has a really hard time communicating it, articulating it, being vulnerable about it. And these are some very core problems. Um, with the death card in the reverse, though, it kind of talks a little bit about that fear. Um, part of it, you know, so sometimes when I feel a card that comes out, it it comes out with a little bit of the other version or some other meanings of itself come out with it also. Um, for example, with this justice card, it feels like you're seeking balance, but it also feels like things are greatly out of balance between the two of you. And I feel like there's a lack of balance between each of you or within each of you as well as between you. And that's part of it. I also feel like with this devil card in the reverse, there are some great advances both of you have made in the ways of emotional intelligence, in the ways of um, handling things better, some of which you'll be amazed and surprised by. But I think there are some issues that still remain. And this is where we see this eight of pentacles. So that would be some of that devil energy in the upright. It feels like it's still kind of coming out of that card, you know, feels like, um, well, yes, you've solved a lot of things, but there are still some pieces that need to be resolved, which of course makes sense. And it comes out here with this eight of pentacles as well. Um, it feels like the way that January, just the way the wind blows in January, the way that you feel it, the way that you feel when you're alone and, and pull things together within your own mind when you're alone. This is kind of the environment of what happens energetically between the two of you. Um, and you are aware that you have stretched and become new people, but you don't exactly know how that's going to manifest yet or how it can manifest. And, and because of some of those things that still bind you from many perspectives, some are those third party energies, some are lack of communication or difficult communication. Um, in some cases, you know, it's like the spirit of cups here where it's a matter of they can't communicate um, because it makes them look like they're out of emotional control in some kind of way. Um, we have the Seven of Wands here. This is kind of the reason that all of this doesn't fall flat. It's got the feeling of like the movement of wands. It's a desire to move forward. Now, it is bordered by this King this king of Wands kind of desire to control. So you got to be careful with it. But it is a very confident ability to move forward. It's the reason that, you know, like I said, this resistance doesn't just automatically win out. Because when you look at this, you see that there's a question. You see that the resistance makes a very strong argument. You also see that the passion makes a strong argument as well. And so seeking this balance, part of it is seeking the balance and, you know, why you're going forward to do the types of things that you're looking to do. There's a constant juggle, which we've seen a lot of sense of um, juggling, not just, this is very in the day-to-day, -day, okay? And so we've seen a lot of 
talk about how you are going to be juggling more than one priority. You're going to have more than one thing going on. You're going to have um, emotions around this person, but you also will have something that sets your soul on fire that takes, wants to take some of your time. Could be relevant to your job, could be relevant to a different endeavor entirely. Maybe you're starting a business. Maybe there's something else that's going on. It's volunteer work. It could be any number of things. But there's a need to make decisions. And I don't see the two of swords out here just yet. But there's a need to make decisions um, that help you to juggle and balance this. So the fact that this passion is here, it ends up being kind of a self-feeding cycle from an energetic standpoint as well. Um, but be watching for... Um, be watching for basically the energy to hum with you and your person. This is a source of healing. Some of what is happening um, in the current energy right now and what's going to be happening in the January energy. So it may feel like you guys are kind of um, eddying around each other, but not necessarily making as many advances from a 3D perspective, but it should start to manifest in the 3D. The one thing I would say is to be careful of a tendency to want to um, get real attached to outcomes real quickly. And that sort of came out earlier when I said this turns out incredibly well, assuming no one is too attached or assuming no one cares about any outcomes too much or something to that effect. And that's essentially what it was. It was, you know, um, the best results will come from not feeling a need to control this outcome or a need to for things to turn out a certain way on a certain timeline. Um, I think when we get into the extended, we look a little bit more at, this is a, a great outlook on the energy of the month. Maybe let's understand a little bit more about what wants to happen between you and your person during the course of January as well. So we see that it's kind of laid out there depending on... Um, the trajectory things already are going either way it looks like you've got a lot of healing that's coming your direction you're going to be able to find the outlines of what healing has already been done which there are questions about that up here so um, opportunities that kind of allow you to jump into a direction start to do some things and yet some resistance to doing so so let's get a little bit more um, information about that when we get into the extended um, let's look at your focus areas first, as we typically do here in this segment of the reading. And I know some of you um, have, you know, have talked about having a tendency to jump into this segment of the reading because it's the part that's about you and they're no longer interested in hearing about this person. Um, I would say there's probably still a lot of good information coming out here in the rest of this reading. Um, to talk about you and the direction that you're being given in this particular reading especially. There's a lot here that um, it's true advice for both you and your person. Um, you're the one that's listening so hopefully you're able to absorb it and take it into consideration. Just be aware that these things are coming so that when it happens you're in a better position to manage it. Two of Wands so far is what we've had come out. This is um, this is as significant of a feeling of this Eight of Cups and feels just as much like that full energy of trying something different. Oh, nice. Okay, so you have the Sun card. The Sun talks about happiness. You also have the Death and Rebirth card in the reverse. There is something here. Um, that wants to get in the way of you moving toward your happiness. You have to make a shift. You have to make an emotional shift that is probably more considerable than you had realized um, was necessary. I will just say that. The Two of Wands is a fairly significant, it's again got that leap of faith sort of attitude, but it's a fun leap of faith because it's like you're jumping into something fun and the only thing that happens if you decide to come back from it is that you remove something from your life that's that you actually would like to do. But there's some downside. There's something here um, with the death and the rebirth card in the reverse that makes you not willing to do whatever the trade-offs are um, to incorporate this. So watch for those. And when they come here, all I would say is you're probably not entirely wrong 
about this resistance. So figure out what it is that you have resistance about. Deeply, deeply get into, this is the Naked Heart, and this is the Naked Heart Tarot. And so um, most decks have 78 cards, okay? This is the 79th card in this deck, and it comes out meaning something a little bit different every time I see it. And it seems like, I feel like I, when I use this deck, I feel called to use it. And when I use it, it seems like this card comes out a fair amount of the time. Um, what it really feels like to me here is what I was kind of talking about as far as looking deeply into the questions. You're probably not entirely wrong or your responses are probably based in something that is um, that makes sense. That makes sense. So keep in mind, um, you really want to dig deeply into what it is that makes you feel like you don't have time for this or can't prioritize it or... There's something that um, fun that was coming your way and you need to figure out how you're going to incorporate it into your life or whether it's going to be something that you don't incorporate into your life. And it feels like you've got um, the ability to be really balanced about the way that you or the way that you um, the way that you think about it. You know, so you've got the five of cups and the six of cups, but they're both coming out in the reverse. So five of cups in the reverse sounds a lot like feels a lot like having balance, having emotional balance and being able to see the positive things in a situation as well as being able to see the negative ones. The six of cups in the reverse sounds like and feels like in this situation not being guided or not not saying that you're not being guided by um, what you've learned in previous situations or really it's more about having been guided by the learnings more than having been guided by the pain. So that's kind of what comes out with that one. That's I feel like that's really make sure that you know why you're doing the things that you're doing and take the time to think them through. But as you're thinking them through, also make sure you're feeling them through. Um, with the Heart of Wands, it's about it's kind of a variation on what we were just saying there and not just knowing why you're doing what you're doing, but make sure that you're doing things for reasons that you also can stand beside and stand behind and that feel right to you. Be truthful with yourself. This is the card of the Ace of Swords. That's all about being truthful with yourself. Being truthful with yourself. Okay. Let's see what else wants to come out for you here. Because this is where you're going to focus given what else is on the table. This is kind of, um, you have a wide open emotional growth path right in front of you. How are you going to handle that? What's going to be in that path? Focus on the overthinking. This is a gift. There's a sense of a tendency to overthink and you're going to find yourself doing it in situations that are not life or death. These are going to be situations where you can look at it and say, oh, hey, I'm doing the thing. I'm overthinking. And it helps you once again to define the edges of where your healing has had the, you know, where you've truly been able to heal and where you are able to say, hey, I don't even have those same thoughts anymore than ones that I used to have. Nine of Wands in the reverse allow the walls to come down. So while you're having those moments of overthinking, and then you're, um, you can use that analysis mode to say, you know, how much, how much overthinking, what, what am I doing? How, how much does this serve me? How much does this help me? Um, and in those places where you find that there's a wall that's ready to come down, this is that nine of wands saying, go ahead and take that opportunity to pull that, pull it down if it seems like it's the right thing to do. So, um, heart of swords in the reverse heart of swords in the reverse is not it's about not making quick decisions or not making rash choices three of swords i was thinking this one i was feeling this one earlier um with the six of cups and the five of cups here in the reverse three of swords in the reverse is about um being able to use what you've learned in the past to help devise your path for the future but not necessarily being entirely hindered by whatever was limiting you in the past because it's taking into consideration that th those learnings that we're seeing here and just kind of making sure that um, 
that you're able to use those to the best of your ability. And knowing that sometimes learning something and understanding it does not necessarily mean you will be able to put it into play. And so you can put it on the, I'm still working on that pile, you know. And this is basically, there's going to be opportunity for you to do that in the month of January. And that's a place for you to focus. Um, so when we go into the extended here, let's take a little bit more of a look at what you can expect maybe to have happen as if there's any sort of practical advice maybe that wants to come out of that. Um, we see the environment where you're going to be operating in January. Feels like a good environment, but there are a couple of watch outs, particularly around the area of control. And of course, some of that, some of that isn't you. So um, let's see what happens in the extended when we get in there and kind of look to see what else you can expect. Um, the link is down below if you'd like to join me there. Otherwise, I will see you again in tomorrow's reading.